Sometimes you just need a Band-Aid. What's going on, guys? I'm JK, and this is JK is Hiking, where I'm all about hiking, backpacking, and gear. And today I want to talk to you about one of the most important pieces of gear that you can take with you on the trail, and that's your medical kit. Now, like so many other people, when I first started backpacking, I headed out to my Cabela's. For you, it could be an REI or a Bass Pro Shop or one of these places. And I went looking for some kind of medical kit that I could take with me into the backcountry. And I came upon this little adventure medical kit. When I got it, it was pretty cheap. It was like 15 bucks. It had a bunch of stuff in it. It had band-aids, gauze, tape, pills. As I started looking through it, I started pulling things out and realizing maybe I don't need everything that's in this for what I'm doing. By no means do I consider myself an ultralight backpacker, but I do consider myself a lightweight backpacker. And so I do everything in my power to try and cut my weight down because the less weight I carry, the much more comfortable I am backpacking. And one of the things I learned is that I could go through this kit and I could cut a few things out. And after cutting it out, I ended up dumping the entire thing, and I, now I just pretty much use the bag. The bag itself is great. It's basically a heavy-duty Ziploc bag. It's waterproof, and I basically put my entire medical kit inside of here. With that said, we should probably look at the kit. One of the things that I like to take with me when I go on the trail is Luco tape. Now I don't take this whole roll, I'll take a smaller amount of it, but this stuff is great because when you have blisters or when you have cuts, this stuff really comes in handy. When I go out into the backcountry, I pretty much know where my feet tend to blister, and so I'll take some Luco tape and put that on my feet even before I start on the trail that day. One of the things I've learned about Luco tape is it's very adhesive, but it has to sit for a minute after you've put it on, and it doesn't play well with sweat. So if your foot's all sweaty and you're wanting to put this on a hot spot, you've got to take the time, wash your foot off, let it dry, and then put the tape on because if you don't, it really, for me, it just doesn't stick. I will say though that once you've put it on and it's adhesed to the skin, this stuff is a bear to take off. And uh, that's one of the things that makes it so valuable. When you've got tape that you know is gonna stay on, you're gonna to wanna to use it. Another way a lot of guys use this stuff is they'll just simply uh, take some toilet paper if they have a cut. They don't bring band-aids with them. They'll take a piece of toilet paper, tear it down, put it over the cut, and put the Luco tape over that, and it works as a band-aid. And uh, they do a very good job of that, but for me personally, I still bring some bandages with me, some small little band-aid type bandages. And the kinds I use are very specific. One of the things that you may not know about me is that I suffer from psoriasis and the place where it attacks me the most is actually on my hands. As a matter of fact, if you look on my thumb right now, there is a huge bandage right there on my thumb because I got hit by a round of psoriasis, caused my thumb to split open, and so I always carry these bandages, mostly because of situations like this. And the ones that I like the most are these Nexcare waterproof bandages. Um, these things are sweet. I mean, that's just the only way I could put it. They're just sweet. They're clear so they don't stick out. I don't like people to see all the bandages I'm wearing. Um, and for me, because of my psoriasis, there may be times when I'm wearing them a lot, but I don't like people to notice them. And these things are clear. So when you put them on, um, there's a pad that goes over the area that needs to be covered. And then it's a clear plastic that you put over the rest of it. And these things, like Luco tape, will stick and hold forever. Uh, sometimes I, the psoriasis that I deal with will actually attack my feet. And when it attacks my feet, I'll take one of these larger bandages like this one, and I'll put that over the area that's affected on my feet, and it will stay on for days. It's amazing how well these little bandages work. And I always take a few of them with me whenever I know I'm doing an overnight. If I'm going to do multiple days, I'll take a few more with me. But these bandages have become almost irreplaceable in my medical kit. Next up is my personal pharmacy. I mean, I mean, I, I don't really like, I don't like taking pills, but I take pills on the trail. Like most people, I take a little bit of this stuff right here, this is vitamin I, ibuprofen. I make sure I have that on the trail with me. Uh, if you do a long day, upwards of 20 miles of hiking, 
Um, when you're a weekend warrior, you're not doing that every day. You don't have trail legs like, like a through hiker does. And so your knees, your ankles, your muscles could get sore from all the hiking from the day before. And so I always take some ibuprofen with me and I may take that in the morning just to kind of relieve that pain a little bit. Also as a 45 year old, my joints make funny noises. And even though I enjoy hiking so much, uh, it is nice to have something to kind of relieve that pain a little bit in the mornings when I first wake up. To deal with allergies, I always take a few of these little pink pills right here. These are Benadryl, and I always make sure I have those with me because being outside, being around nature, uh, can trigger allergies. And when allergies get triggered, the trip isn't a lot of fun. And so I'll take this stuff with me more specifically for at night. So if my allergies are really bothering me, these can actually help me to sleep a little bit. I rarely take them at home, but when I'm out in the woods, sometimes these are more valuable than water, it seems like. Being able to get a good night's sleep when you're dealing with allergies and itchy eyes and a stuffy nose and all that, this stuff's just valuable. Something else I always take with me on the trail is a couple tablets of Imodium. I like to make sure I have this stuff with me because you just never know when Montezuma's Revenge is going to attack. And I learned my lesson about that on the Sheltoe Trace. When I was within the first week of the trip, we had all of our stuff get rained out. Basically, our phones got destroyed. I had a sleeping pad that died on me. Uh, some other things needed to be replaced. And we went into town to resupply and, and to replace some of our stuff that had gotten destroyed. Somehow in the process of all that, I picked up some kind of stomach bug from somebody in town. I don't know who the person was, but they gave me a stomach bug and for three days I was out cold and could not hike. Now I'm not saying having Imodium would have made it right immediately, but having some Imodium there with me might have given me one day off the trail as opposed to three, which would have been huge as far as getting the miles in for the Sheltoe Trace. So I never go on the trail without a little bit of Imodium. I've had sinus problems since I was a kid. It's a family trait, we've just always had them, and my sinuses always act up when I don't want them to. So that's why I take these things with me when I go on the trail. I guarantee most of you have never seen this stuff before. I don't even know exactly how you pronounce this, uh, but it's called ACC Akut. And it's, I believe this is from Germany. It's a sinus medication that you take like Alka-Seltzer. It's, it's a pill that you just drop down into your water and it's effervescent and it fills it up. The nice thing is this stuff doesn't taste disgusting like Alka-Seltzer can taste. Stuff's actually pretty good and it really does help. When you are out in the woods and your sinuses are acting up and you're going up a big hill and you're having trouble breathing, there's nothing worse. And when you're able to take something that within an hour or two relieves that for the day, man, it is awesome. Like I said, this stuff you don't hear about often, but you can find it on Amazon. Look for it. I believe it's like $35 for, for a box with a bunch of these things in them. It's the only thing now that I use when I'm dealing with sinus problems. Next up in my medical kit is a little set of tweezers and a needle to pop blisters. Like I said, I get blisters a lot. And uh, because I get blisters a lot, I always carry a needle with me so that I can pop those at night and relieve that pressure and allow those to drain out and clean out so that the next day I'm not hiking in pain. Blisters are terrible and if they go untreated, they can be even worse. So it's really important that you already have a plan in place to deal with them in case they happen when you're on the trail. That's why I always have my needle with me. I also have tweezers. Because you're outdoors, you're always grabbing onto limbs when you have to climb over trees, over rocks, and occasionally, it's wood, you can get a splinter. And while a lot of people say they haven't dealt with that, it's happened to me three times now, and I've been backpacking basically for a year. So I don't go anywhere without some tweezers just to make sure that I'm able to get those things out of my hands. Not only that, they're fantastic when uh, you're trying to do a repair on the trail and you're having trouble getting to a thread or you're having trouble getting something pulled out of the fabric that's causing your problems. Those little tweezers are really nice and the ones I have, they don't even weigh an ounce. So it's almost like you're getting something for nothing as far as the weight goes. Something that does add a little weight, but for me personally, I just don't go on the trail without it. It's just a small little container of iodine. Uh, whenever I get cuts, whenever I get blisters, I don't want to get infection. Uh, the last thing I need is for a cut or a wound to get infected 
while I'm on the trail. And so for me, uh, whenever I get a blister and I pop it, I immediately drop some iodine in there just to make sure there's no bacteria hanging out that's gonna cause any problems. Anytime I get a cut or my skin pops open like I was talking about earlier, it's nice to have this iodine there just to be on the safe side. It's not like you're in a home where you can just go to the sink and wash your hands. You can go and use hand sanitizer, which is fine, but there's something about having peace of mind when it comes to having an open wound on your body. And for me, having this little bit of iodine just helps out. It does weigh a little bit more, but it's a little bit of peace of mind knowing that I'm gonna be able to fight off infection in case of a wound. And the last thing that I keep in my medical kit is this little container that was once for a field repair kit, but now when you open it up, it holds an extra little Bic lighter, but I'm probably gonna have to get rid of this because it's not blue. And as we're finding out by a lot of the YouTube backpackers, if it's not a blue Bic lighter, you're really not a backpacker. Also down inside of this container, is something very simple and very important to me, and those are earplugs. If you're backpacking with anybody else, you know you're gonna hear snoring, you know you're gonna hear other things. In central Kentucky, we have these birds. They're called whimperwills, and that name is the noise they make, and they'll do it till 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. And for me, if I don't have these things in, I'm gonna be up all night listening to these crazy birds make awful noises. And so even though it's not technically medical, it gives me a good night's sleep, which promotes good health, so I'm gonna run with it. So that's what I keep inside of my medical kit. What do you take with you when you go out in the backcountry? I know most ultralight backpackers would say I'm probably taking too much with me, and I also know that there are lightweight backpackers who say I'm not quite taking enough. So what do you take? Leave a comment below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the page and hit that notification bell so you find out every time one of these videos drops. And until next time, We'll see you later. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about one of the most important pieces of screwing up your talking, like, <laughs> like for trucks not to drive by while I'm trying to video. And I keep all of my toiletries in this. I don't keep my toiletries in this. I got hit by a round of sur truck. That guy was driving by like crazy. Um,